Hi, in this module, I'm going to talk about local search, a strategy for approximately computing the maximum weight assignment a constraint satisfaction problem. So remember that a CSP is defined by a factor graph, which includes a set of variables, x1 through xn, and a set of factors, f1 through fm, where each factor is a function that depends on a subset of the variables and returns a non-negative number. Each assignment to all the variables has a weight given by the product of all the factors evaluated on the assignment, and the objective is to compute the maximum weight assignment as usual. So, so far we've seen backtracking search and beam search. And both of these search algorithms works uh, by extending partial assignments. You start with the empty assignments, and then you assign one variable, and you assign another variable until you get to a complete assignment. And then maybe you backtrack, or maybe you don't. So local search is going to be a little bit different. It's going to modify complete assignments. So you're going to start with a random assignment, and then you're going to choose one variable, and you're going to change it, choose another variable, and change it. It's more kind of like house maintenance rather than building a house. So one of the advantages of local search is that it gives you additional flexibility. You can pick any variable and try to improve it. Whereas backtracking search and beam search, you have to do things in a certain order. Well, beam search, once you've assigned a variable, you can't go back. And backtracking search, you can backtrack, but you can't really kind of backtrack, backtrack out of order. So recall our running example, object tracking. So at each uh, time position, you observe a noisy sensor reading of a particular object. You observe um, 0, 2, and 2 as the positions of the object and you're trying to figure out where this object was. So we did model this as a CSP, where we have uh, three uh, observational factors, O1, which favors x1 equals uh, 0, O2, which favors x2 equals 2, O3, which favors x3 equals 2. And we have two transition factors that favor um, subsequent positions being close by. So let's jump in and suppo suppose we just have a complete assignment, 0, 0, 1. Okay? And the question is, how do we improve this? Well, let's look at um, the weight of this assignment. So the weight of this assignment is 2 uh, because uh, 0 agrees with 0, times 2 because 0 agrees with 0, times 0, uh-oh, because these two are too far apart, um, times 1, because these only differ by 1, and times 1, because these differ by 1. But you get a 0. So that's not a very good assignment. So how can we improve? Let's try to reassign x2 to something else. Let's try to assign it to some v. So we can set v equals 0, 1, or 2. And for each of these um, alternate assignments, we can compute its weight. And then we simply take the assignment with the best weight. In this case, it's uh, this one, which sets x2 to be 1. So then we end up with a new assignment, which is better than the old one. So mission accomplished. So we can refine this strategy a little bit more. So um, suppose we're trying to assign x2. Um, the weight of a new assignment um, where x2 has been replaced with some v is as follows. So you're multiplying all the factors in the CSP together, O1, T1, O2, T3. But note that only some of the factors depend on v. In particular, O1 and O3 don't depend on v. So no matter what v is, these are the same which means that we can ignore them and um, just evaluate the factors that involve x2. So this is an idea of locality, which leverages the structure of the CSP. When evaluating possible reassignments to some variable xi, we only need to consider the factors that depend on xi. 
So in a factor graph where there's lots and lots of variables, and you're trying to reassign one variable which might have a small neighborhood, then you're uh, saving a lot of effort. So now we're ready to define our local search algorithm, which is called iterated conditional modes. It sounds fancy, but it's really simple. The idea is that we're going to start x to be a random complete assignment. And we're going to loop through x1 through xn um, and then keep on going until we converge or we run out of time. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to reassign xi. Okay, so we're going to consider each possible value that xi could take on. And then we're going to update the current assignment x with that value. Okay, so this, um, that produces an assignment x uh, v. And then we're going to compute the weights of each of these xvs and choose the one with the highest weight. So remember, in computing the weight, we only need to evaluate the factors that touch xi. And also notice that this looks remarkably like you know, greedy search or beam search. Um, there is a substantial difference in that here, x are complete assignments, not partial assignments. So this is not extending an assignment so much as replacing xi uh, with a v. So uh, pictorially, what this looks like is um, you start with x1. So by convention, um, unshaded nodes are the ones that are meant to be uh, reassigned, and shaded ones are the ones that are fixed. So you pick up x1 and you say, well, can I change it to make it better? And then you pick some value of x1. Then you go to x2 and say, can I make, uh, change x2 to make this uh, assignment better? And then you go to x3. And then you go back to x1 and say, hey, can I make it better by changing x1 again? You keep on going until um, it converges. So here is a demo on the object tracking um, example. Um, So at the start of the algorithm, we're just going to initialize this with a random assignment, 0, 1, 2. And it has a weight uh, of 4. Um, and now I'm going to try to maximize variable 1, uh, x1, given everything else. So let's consider alternative values of x1. So it could be 0, 1, or 2. For each of these, I'm going to compute um, its weight, only evaluating the factors that uh, touch x1. So in this case, it's only O1 and T1 that touch x1. So I only need to evaluate those. Compute the weights, choose the best one, breaking ties arbitrarily. So I choose uh, x1, 0, which means I didn't change. So now let me step. So now I'm looking at 1, x2, um, and can I change anything? Um, nope. And I, what about here? X3 um, assigned is assigned 2. What can I do? Well, um, I compute the weights. And here I am choosing X3 to be 1. OK, so um, I change that assignment. And now I go back to X1 and I iterate. And it looks like I've uh, converged because I'm not changing anything. So I've converged to an assignment with a weight of 4, which, if you remember, is not the optimum uh, maximum weight assignment. The maximum weight assignment is, um, has weight 8. So again, iterative conditional modes is, is going to give you an OK solution, but not necessarily uh, the best one. So convergence properties. Um, so the good news is that the weight of your assignment is uh, not going to go down. It's going to always increase or stay the same each iteration. And this is because when you're trying to reassign a variable, you can always choose the old value um, and maintain the same weight. So any change must be increasing the weight. So this means that it converges in a finite number of iterations because there's only a finite number of uh, possible assignments. So you can only increase the weight uh, a finite number of times. 
This uh, can get second of local optimum, as we've uh, seen, and it's not generally guaranteed to find the optimum assignment. So just a quick note is that there's two ways around this. One is that there is um, a version of this where you can change two variables or maybe three variables at a time. And that allows you to perhaps get out of you know, local optimum. And another thing uh, we can do is add randomness. So at each step, we could just add, um, choose the best option or just choose a random option. And this will also allow us to um, escape these uh, local optimum. Or we can use something like give sampling, which I'll talk about um, in a future module, which will add stochasticity to um, ICM. Okay, so here is the summary. So um, let me summarize actually um, all the search algorithms for CSPs uh, that we've encountered. So first we looked at backtracking search. So the strategy is to extend partial assignments and then backtrack when we uh, get to uh, the complete assignment. The backtracking search is uh, exact. It computes the actual maximum weight assignment. It's the only algorithm that we're considering that does that in general. But the main problem is that the time can be exponential in the number of variables. Then we looked at uh, beam search, which um, extends, also extends partial assignments. Um, and here we're trading off accuracy for time. So this is approximate. It will only give you a, an OK solution, um, but it's linear in the number of variables. And local search, um, we saw iterative conditional modes, which um, does local search by choosing the best uh, value of a variable at each given time um, is a different strategy. Here we're starting with complete assignments and modifying them to make them better. So here it's also approximate, but it's fast just like beam search. Okay, so that concludes this module.